stay tuned. Going in the background, get over here. No, snuck right there. everybody thumper fishing today is july 24th 2024 it's about 5 45 in the morning and we've got uh two days of kayaking scheduled for us today we're gonna head over to canaveral national seashores and we're gonna fish an area i have not fished in my kayak i have shore fished with not the best success when it comes to shore fishing but should have a little bit better luck with the kayak and that is Patillo Creek so we're gonna meet up with my buddy and see what we can get into um, as you've probably seen in a few videos I'm testing out this cooler live well type thing for my shrimp so we're gonna throw some some shrimp today since we want to test that out a little bit more so we're gonna go stop over at the uh, Space Coast Bait and Tackle over in Titusville. We're gonna get, I'm thinking, two dozen shrimp. And then we're gonna head on over and see what we can get into. So stay tuned, everybody. It should be a good day. Step one, wake up, brother, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, Okay. Just do your thing. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. It's already 83 degrees. 712. Alright. Stay tuned. First catch of the day, a little baby snook, come on, calm down. <laughs> Woohoo! Get out of here. A week ago, how different it was here. See, what's that swimming over there? Oh, there you go. Catches? Yeah. I will take it. Um, just a couple of weeks difference, maybe. Thank <laughs> you. 
Not a day without a catfish. There's a school of reds right here. And uh, of course this guy had to come in and steal the show. right over here but can we get them that's another story I got that shrimp right in front of them and Nice little 14 inch snook right there. Oh, definitely some sheep's head. We're gonna run out of shrimp if this is the case. See some fish right over here. They're all stacked along this edge here. Here we go, there we go. Going in the mangroves, get over here. Tighten up the drag. Look at this -ness. There they are, right there.
redfish everywhere right here. And uh, another species, black drum. A little black drum there. They got stripes when they're juveniles. See if we can't get another one over here. There he is. Right there, you see him? Well, not the redfish that we are after, but uh, another little black drum. Get another shrimp on. Yeah. Gotcha. Nice chasing those redfish over there. Got myself a nice black drum. My new PB black drum here. Let's get a measurement on them. 20 inch. Twenty inch right. black drum. You got it. Okay. Twenty inch. Gotcha. Work along these hundred yards, just work back and forth. Go, don't you? All right. Yeah, you want to go, don't you? All right.
definitely not done yet. There we go. Bigger than the last one. You hear that drumming? Let's see what we got for a measurement on this one. Twenty five. You ready, buddy? There you go. Well, we were chasing reds, but we're getting black drum, so I'll take it. That's my new PB black drum right there. 25, 25 inches. Let's get another one. Got a little mangrove snapper. He's not uh, keeper size. 10 inches to keep. All right. Well, we're gonna call it a day. There's a storm coming in. It's about 12.30, it's getting hot. Good day. We saw lots of snook. We got some small snook. We caught mangrove snapper. We caught some sheep's head. All small except for these big drums. Whew. But anyway, let's get back. Let's get loaded up and uh, stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going, I'm planning on going over to Hollower. Whew. I'm going to go dock up. Land ho! What's going on everybody? Well, it's hot, man. It is hot. I've, 
96 out. Woo wee! So day started off really slow. I was throwing all kind of artificials and uh, no bueno. So like I said, I was trying to test out my new uh, bait bucket slash cooler. So we had some live shrimp, so I figured I would throw some live shrimp. I initially started throwing the shrimp, just free lining it, no weight, no jig, no nothing, just, just a small little circle hook. And we got uh, a couple small catfish and then we got uh, a couple small snook, super small snook. And uh, water's super, super low. Excuse me. Pounding water, it's hot. Um, yeah, the water is just so low. So then I decided, you know what? It's so hot. Water's so low. Let's go. I'm gonna go try uh, this little canal. This a little bit deeper. So I head over there, and I start working the mangroves. And I'm just, I'm standing up, just letting the wind kind of drift me down. And I start seeing snook in the mangroves. And then I see half a dozen redfish. I'm talking 30 plus uh, inches, big reds. They just were not biting, right? So then I figure I'd go up a ways from them, the direction they're going, cast. And I finally did get one to take. Battled it for a little while. You know that's one thing when you make your video when you make videos you know and that's why some guys you know end up not making videos because you know it's a, they care more about getting that catch not losing it because when you need to figure out you know trying to record getting different angles you're adding different elements to it that uh, you know it, it gives more of an opportunity for that fish to break off so I was fumbling I was trying to get my other camera going and the hook came out I was super bummed. But not only did the hook come out, it tangled up my line so bad that I ended up just cutting it. At that point, instead of tying, you know, a new FG knot on the water, which is a pain in the butt, what I did was is I threw on my popping cork and I figured I would work those mangroves over there because it goes from about two to three feet and drops to about nine. So I was fishing that ledge. And then I started noticing some big schools of black drum. Big schools, I'm talking like a dozen plus of them. So at that point, I started drifting my popping cork in there and uh, boom, got a big 20 inch, I think it was 20 inch black drum, which was my PB for black drum at that point. Then I was catching all kind of stuff, catfish, I caught uh, mangrove snapper, I caught another snook. I caught some sheep's head and right when my buddy Nelson comes over and I'm telling him, hey, fish along these mangroves. This is where they are. They're cruising back and forth, back and forth. So right when I was telling him that, boom, my bobber goes down. Got another black drum. And this one was even bigger, 25 inches, new PB for me, black drum. Woo. Yeah, those guys got some weight to them, that's for sure. But uh, super cool. So I knew what they were doing. There's tons of fiddler crabs all throughout there. So I knew that's what they were going up on that shore to do. And I was fishing with shrimp. So I figured, you know what? I bet you jigging a crab along that shoreline would work. So I gave my buddy Nelson a couple, um, I think they're, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put a picture right here of these jigs. They work perfect because they sit the way, and if you weigh the way you hook the crab, I'll put a picture of how I hook the crabs, and it, it's less prone to snag because it sits perfectly on the bottom, and then you jerk it, and you jerk it, and you can kind of hop it or just scoot it across the bottom, and um, that seems to, 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 you know, it's always worked for me. But um, so then I was, you know, still using my shrimp, and then I came across another guy, nice guy. Uh, he's a teacher uh, somewhere around here. And um, he was trying to get on some fish too, but he didn't have any uh, bait. Cause like I said, they just weren't hitting. They were real picky. So I said, hey, here's a couple jigs. Here's a couple crabs, you know, grab a handful because <laughs> my problem is I over prepare. I take everything. If you've fished with me, you know, I bring a ton of stuff. And uh, that's because I just, 
I don't know, it's that military side of me that, you know, that one time that you don't bring it is the time you need it. So I gave him a couple of those jigs and uh, a good handful of those crabs and then I went on my way. And then I noticed down the way, boom, he got himself a nice sized black drum. So that definitely is the ticket, I think, that uh, if I was gonna do it again, I probably would fish those crabs. I actually never fished with the crabs. I just, I made an assumption, like I'm pretty sure these guys are eating these crabs. And if you work that crab jig along the, the edge there, you'll get hits and sure as, you know what? He got a hit, I think, within 10, 15 minutes of me of, his, of me giving him those things. So that's cool. It's always, you know, a lot of guys like, you know, don't get me wrong. There are certain, there are certain times and places and spots and situations where, you know, I might keep the, the, the spot a little hush-hush or what the bait is, you know, a little hush-hush. But uh, in general, I just, I enjoy fishing. And if I can help other people get on some fish, that's just as enjoyable for me as catching the fish. So um, that was really, really cool. Because ultimately, when if a spot gets crowded because you know you, you you posted it up or something like that, if you're an angler, you should be able to go anywhere and find and get on the fish. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I need to drink some more water. Hang on a second. So yeah, overall, Patillo Creek. It's slow, but if you know what you're doing, you can get on a bike. And there is some black drums cruising along in there. And uh, I noticed, I'm sure they go on those flats, but in um, the deep channel, right along the edge of the mangroves, that's where I was getting them. And I was getting them on a popping cork with a shrimp. And then obviously the other guy was getting them on that, like I said, that jig on the bottom with a crab, a fiddler crab. Because there's fiddler crabs there. I'll put a clip in right here. There's fiddler crabs all over the place. So, you know what, the, you know what that saying is, match the hatch. So, if anybody's gonna go out uh, Canaveral National Seashores and uh, you know fish the Indian River side at least, I don't know how the Mosquito side is. I haven't fished there in uh, like two weeks, but um, definitely try some fiddler crabs. There's a lot of them out there. Go on a hike on some of those side trails, get a net in a bucket, and you could just scoop them by the handfuls, and they make a really good bait. Uh, maybe I'll put in a clip here of how, like I said, how I, I, I rig those crabs. You need to kind of wiggle it in and, and you know, nice and easy because uh, sometimes you'll you'll rip the crab and then they'll fly off. They're not the easiest thing to hook, that's for sure. But um, anyway, everybody, stay tuned because tomorrow I gotta get home. I gotta clean all this stuff up. I gotta edit this video. I gotta get it published. And then I need to get to bed because I got another damn meeting up with a, a new friend that I've been talking to a lot on social media. Uh, and he's a big time uh, Space Coast fisherman. And um, he also has got his kayak and he wants to go over to Hallover. So hopefully we can have another episode of Bridge Monsters over at Hallover. So stay tuned for tomorrow. Hopefully I have a pretty epic video at Hallover. I'm thinking we'll do what we did last time, set it up with the fish finder rig. Maybe I'll pick up uh, a dozen live mullet uh, or maybe I'll go net my own. We'll see. But anyway, everybody, I appreciate you for watching. Don't forget, hit that like button. It really helps push the videos. And uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. My algorithm says that 98% of the people watching my videos are not subscribed. So subscribe. It definitely helps out. Anyway, everybody, I'll catch you in the next one. Tight lines. Peace.